This is the Midwest Invest Report brought to you by Kyle over at Midwest Invest Realty Group, brokered by Real. This show is built to help you become the expert of your market. And right now, we are laser focused on helping house hackers in our audience. If you're between the ages of 18, 25 ish, curious, and maybe even an aspiring real estate investor, we are focused in on you. This quarter, we are diving deep into what it takes to get into your first investment property using a house hack. But before we jump in, if you haven't snagged the latest version of our Midwest Invest Report, let's get you signed up. Every Monday, we are bringing fresh insight about your market right to the top of your inbox. Start becoming the expert of the FM real estate market today. Sign up. We'll get you on the list for the weekly Midwest Invest Report. Don't miss it. We're loving what we're seeing out of the report with all the tactics and more than just the the report video portion weekly. So check the show notes to get signed up um, and and get that coming to your inbox and join our subscriber list there. But let's get right into it. First things first, our market minute. And surprise, surprise, if you haven't heard yet, We're going to talk about interest rates, you know, and this is like one of those things that real estate agents just like to talk about. And here I am doing the same thing, but I want to bring you guys into the world of this because this is what we do daily and it majorly impacts our market. And so what we're seeing right now, you guys, if you haven't noticed, interest rates were up near seven for much of, they climbed there for, for much of the end of 2023 for sure. And right at the end of the year, And into the new year here, we've seen interest rates dip down below seven and even close to 6%. Um, I've got a chart here from my trusty old Zillow mortgage app, um, which is kind of a nice little uh, app for checking the interest rates. They've got a little map on there. And yeah, we're climbing down from close to where national fixed 30-year interest rates were up to over seven, even close to seven and a half at times, down closer to six and under six and a quarter. And so what I want you to know about that is movement from six, seven to six on like a $315,000 house. Okay. That was around our average price point um, in 2023 for, for our team specifically, 315,000. Um, if you're moving from 7% interest on a 30 year loan to 6% interest, you're saving around $150 a month that that's, uh, that's coming down on your monthly payment, which doesn't feel like a lot, but once you start putting a little more down and getting rid of PMI and maybe you, uh, you let your credit build a little bit and you get less, you know, more, more and more favorable terms. That stuff can compound and 150 bucks a month is, is, isn't small when you think about it, extra, almost $2,000 in your pocket every year during the course of your loan. So I think, uh, what does this mean is what I wanted to ask. What does this mean for you to know about our market in Fargo Moorhead? I'm predicting with inventory levels staying low, they kind of dip down in quarter four and they're low this time of year in quarter one and interest rates coming down, generally that will tell me from an economical standpoint that the buyer population is going to come out. There's a little more favorable terms to buy a house in the market. So we'll see an increase in buyers with the same same steady inventory is going to create a little bit of a seller's market. Some of that competitive selling market where properties that are very attractive that hit the market start to get into competition again. They start to get multiple offer scenarios. Um, And all I got to say about that is when you're navigating an aggressive market like that, the team you build around you for this process is even more crucial. Doing this by yourself can lead to a ton of frustration. We've seen it over the last two years. So just know it's, it's, and you'll hear me say this later in the episode, it's who, not how, when it comes to a tough real estate market like that. And I'm thinking earlier in this year, you guys, it's going to be that. Now, a, cu- a little bit of insight is in quarter three, quarter four, when interest was high and inventory kind of was higher than it is now, we saw a lot of favorable market conditions for buyers. 
we had buyers in our office that were getting closing costs paid. We had buyers that were getting great reduction negotiations in price, um, reducing price. And so you guys got to know, like playing into these market conditions, uh, I still think you should play into your life conditions first. Like your life has got to keep moving forward, but the market conditions can be a great advantage or at least uh, waters that you should navigate with strategy. So that's our market minute right now. If, if we ever see big changes in interest rates, I want to bring that to you guys. Uh, but that's kind of the update on the interest rate market. A quick note that I did want to mention is a lot of people always talk about the 30 year fixed rate when there's other loan options out there. A lot of people in 2020 and 21 were getting 20 year fixed or 15 year fixed. And the 15 year fixed rate right now is like 5.3%. Now, this will vary between any lenders that are out there. But if you're able to do a smaller period for your loan, not 30 years, but 15, you can get your interest rate down all the way closer to five. And so there's a lot of cool things you can do out there um, as far as strategy goes. And I just want to bring that to you today. But let's get into the content. We're talking about house hacking. And I want to speak directly to those out there. Now, when you were thinking about 2024, maybe writing down some goals, if you're like me, maybe you were just talking to your friends, family over the holidays, and it came up that you said, I want to get into real estate investing in 2024. That's my goal. That's one of my goals. If you wrote that down, this option of house hacking that we're focusing on in the Midwest Investor Report is definitely something that you should look into. Okay, house hacking can be a great option. And for this episode, I want to give you five next steps if that is what you've said as a goal, if that's something that you want to achieve. <clears throat> and so let's get into those five. Number one, make a game plan for your goals. What do I mean by that? Okay, so you said the goal, there's a vision, we got to put parts to this. Part of that is going to be the criteria. When we talk criteria as far as real estate, you got to have a general idea, like, where do you want to be? Maybe you're open. Maybe you'll be anywhere where the, the right deal exists. But a big one for our market is, do you want to be on, on the Minnesota side or the North Dakota side? That's a big one. We want to talk criteria and price range. It's going to greatly affect what, how much rent can be pulled in um, for what price points you're buying at and how large. Now, when you're doing a house hack, you have to stay between two units and four units in order for it to qualify for a house hack. So a fourplex is the biggest you'd be looking for. And I should mention, single family homes can be used as a house hack too. What happens is people buy that home as a primary residence. They live in it. Maybe they rent out other rooms to their friends. They're not renting out another side of the building like a duplex, but they're renting out other parts of the property. And then in one or two years, they can go buy another primary residence and keep that one as a rental. And that's definitely the house hack process as well. So don't think that house hacking just has to be, hey, I bought a duplex, I live on this side and rent out the other side. Um, that's very optimal because sometimes that can cover your, your living expense entirely. But just know single families can play into this too. So we're making a game plan. We've got our criteria. With your criteria, like I said, price range, location, timeline is big. You got to know, usually you're coordinating with a lease that you may be a part of. Understand that it takes you know, 30 to 60 days. If you get aggressive with finding the right property, it takes 30 to 60 days to close on that property. Closings when you get the keys, when you, when your first payment due, that's something to ask your lender because that's a delay outside of when you close. Um, and so build out that timeline. And then that goes into the, the other sub part of step one, which is building your team. Okay. You're going to need people in your world to help you execute this. And if you're like me, you definitely have a do-it-yourself mentality. Like, I want to figure this out as I go. But the, a huge catalyst to helping you do this quickly and successfully and not missing any steps, which I would say learning the hard way is the hard way. Um, it's awesome to build a team. I'm talking things like knowing an insurance person, having a lender in mind, having a real estate professional that you're talking to about this. Maybe even when you're talking about, hey, what, is pro what do properties rent for? Do you have a property manager that you've talked to about that? These are people that know the market. They can look at a unit, understand what that what income potential that unit has. That's crucial for your knowledge to, to run the correct numbers, okay? So 
we're going to make a game plan on this thing first. And, and that's as simple as putting, putting it down on a piece of paper. Next, you got to get in financial qualification. Okay, so generally you're going to go and talk to a lender about this. They're going to probably ask you for three, roughly three things. You're going to look for your W-2s, last two years of tax returns. Okay, they want to see your last two years of income. Some of you that have been listening, maybe you just started a job in 2023 or even in 2024, and they're not going to see that job history. That's sometimes a hurdle for you in this. Um, but if they can see you know, a year or two of history from your W-2s, your tax returns, that's going to be what they want. They're going to check some pay stubs just to verify income. And then usually they're going to do a credit check. Now I would ask them if they're going to do a hard check or a soft credit check. There are lenders that will just do a soft pull in order to get you qualified. That gets you a pre-approval letter. And that pre-approval letter is all you need to have in order to start looking at property. Okay. And so... Um, could you find also a lender that does this specific thing that we're talking about? I had that note down. Could you find a lender that has done house hack house hacks with clients before, or maybe even has, has done one themselves. That's a really cool thing to have on your side. Someone that knows this process exactly can kind of see all the pitfalls here and there, um, and guide you along the way. Again, coming back to who is on your team for this process. So number three, you're going to start the real estate search. Your real estate agent is going to be a crucial part of this. Of course, you guys, you can do this real estate search yourself. There's a lot of technology out there, but I will say the best house hacks I've seen have come from people monitoring what's on the market and what's off market. There are off market deals, especially things like duplexes, threeplexes, fourplexes that real estate professionals know about because they're in the market. And there's properties that are pocket listed or come up and having an agent that can give you access to maybe some of those off market and on market properties is going to be a really helpful thing for you to find the right deal for you. Um, and so that is an awesome part of this. You guys, if you're doing the search by yourself, some of you might not know this and I, I love educating people on this part. Usually commission you guys is paid on the seller side of the transaction. The seller is agreeing to pay the bot, the buyer broker commission and the seller broker commission. And so being represented by a buyer agent is it's not free because it's built into the pricing, but you don't pay that. So having representation is just a benefit for you. Um, some people think, Hey, I'm going to get into this real estate thing, start my search and I need to, I need to pay an agent or when do I pay an agent? You know, and that's, uh, that's not something that you have to worry about when you're on the buy side. Now, when you come to sell that property, that's when you're going to talk commission with that agent. Okay. So number four, it's important for you to start getting some reps. Um, this is my classic statement about the pendulum of activity, action versus inaction. So many people that want to get into this real estate investing goal, they start reading books, they start listening to podcasts, and that's all they're doing and swinging that pendulum back to action is so important. You need to get eyes on things because the first couple properties you see are going to open your eyes wide up. They're going to help you understand what's good, what's out there, what you get at certain price points. Okay. And so getting some reps, I have a, a note here that says, look at one property a week, at least, even if the market's not showing you what you want, maybe your ideal criteria, Go look at some, get some reps, walk through some properties. It really helps you understand what you don't want in your next property. Um, this just, and this gets you to the place where you have seen enough things so you feel comfortable pulling the trigger on an offer. Um, and so get some reps. That's number four on this process. And then number five is know your numbers. Again, this is going to be hard to do if you've never done this, right? But that's just a barrier that's a hurdle that you can overcome by having the right people in your life. And so I love the three year vivid vision format of this. You guys, when I, when you're doing your numbers on these places, you're going to do the fundamentals, of course. Hey, what's the income that it could bring in? What are my expenses going to be? And I want you to get out of the mindset of what exactly is this investment right now to what it could be. And I don't want you to be over optimistic, but when I bought my first fourplex and did a house hack, the day that I bought it, it didn't look like this home run investment. In fact, there were a lot of people questioning 
what, why would you pay that amount for that property? But it hit my criteria, it hit the quality that I wanted to achieve. So I paid the price with a plan, my three-year plan was to increase rents, lower expenses. And I saw a route in which I could do that. And that's exactly what I did. You guys, so I encourage you as an investor, when you're doing this analysis, run the numbers you uh, as is, run the numbers that you see day to day but also plan for where you want the numbers to be you as an investor, you as a manager of that asset. And also I love when we do analysis, sometimes I, we have clients that come and say, Hey, let me see the numbers. Oh, the 2023 numbers look like crap. Well, that might be because the man investment was mismanaged and that's maybe why they're selling it. But what are the numbers going to look like for us? And I love running analysis with maybe a low, high expenses, lower income, maybe a medium with nice income, but, kind of medium expenses. And then what if in, we got income up and we kept expenses low? Not to understand like, hey, here's where we're gonna, you know, we're, we have to get it to here. But you start to understand the variance of this investment. What if it went really bad versus what it could be? And you can understand if that risk is worth the reward. So run a vari variable scenarios when you're doing your numbers on this process. So you guys, that's five things to help you get into a house hack, if that was on your goal sheet for 2024, application and next steps. Who do I think this real estate strategy is for is, is what I wanted to uh, address to the audience. And you guys, I really think that if you're able to be flexible with your living situation, and you don't own a property yet, a primary residence yet. Um, I think this can be an amazing way for you to build your portfolio slowly over the next five, 10 years. I know people that have started doing this because maybe they're not married and have children and need a, you know, the, the amenities of a house aren't high on their priority list. They just need shelter and they want to be strategic with it. They're able to buy one of these each, every two years for a consistent 10 year period. And by the time they're in the thirties, mid thirties, they're able to have a nice real estate portfolio kind of trail littered behind them. And then they're able to get into that, that mode where they're, uh, where they're purchasing their, their kind of foreverish home or longer term home. So I think this real estate strategy is really good for you. If you're, you know, if you're single, but if you're single, maybe you're, maybe you're engaged or maybe you're going to be married, but both of you are on board with sharing your living situation for a while for uh, a wealth building strategy. I think it can be perfect for you. And next steps, who, not how you heard me say it earlier, Finding your real estate agent that you can trust as the quarterback of executing this whole strategy can be a crucial part, you guys. So uh, remember that who, not how, and a real estate agent, I'm not just pitching it because I am a real estate agent, but I know many other great real estate agents that have a, a abundance of resources, people that you can talk to. Instead of going and finding and building this team all yourself, you can find a great real estate agent that has these resources for you can be an awesome catalyst to actually achieving this goal um, instead of doing all the heavy lifting yourself. So that wraps up this week's Midwest Invest Report, the only show that has the goal to make you the expert of your market. Two action steps to take right after this, you guys. Get signed up for our Midwest Invest Report newsletter that we send out weekly. You guys, we're going to put all of our notes, all of our uh, graphs, things we talked about in there, plus some extra additional things that we're finding in our market. Love the value that that's been. And I uh, want to continue to keep watching the subscribers grow on the Midwest Invest Report. And one question, <clears throat> I want you to ask us one question about our market. We want to continue to learn what you, the audience, are interested in knowing about the market you live in. We want to con continue to bring you value and, and shed light on all the topics that exist in the Fargo-Moorhead real estate market. That's why we're here. That's what we're passionate about. And so leave a comment, stop what you're doing, leave a comment, write that down um, and, and put that comment out there. We read all of them and we really look forward to uh, engaging with you on that. Me and the team at Midwest Investor Realty Group brokered by Real are passionate about using real estate as a way to build a future full of abundance. We help people buy, we help people sell homes, we help people build homes with new construction in the area, and we definitely help people invest in homes. That's one of the niche areas we're passionate about. We're excited to play a part if you're looking for someone you can trust. Great show today, gang. Can't wait to see you next week.